Hi, um, welcome to this talk. Uh, so today I'll be talking about lattice reduction for modules or how to reduce module SVP to module SVP. Um, I'm Tamalika and this is joint work with Noah Stephens Davidowitz from Cornell. So the first half of this talk will be background and motivation and the second half will be uh, an overview of our techniques. So let's begin. Um, let's start with the basics. So a Euclidean lattice is just an additive, uh, a discrete additive subgroup of R to the D. Um, another way of defining a lattice of rank D is just taking the integer linear combination of its basis vectors. So we care about the geometry of lattices and one of the most important quantities associated with the geometry of the lattice L is the length of its shortest non-zero vector. And this is donate, denoted by lambda 1 of L. Since this is a talk on module lattices, um, let's actually define what a module lattice is. So we fix a number field K of degree N and we fix a full rank discrete subring R in K. Uh, so, for example, you can take k to be the power of two subatomics, and you can take r to be the ring of integers uh, of that. But uh, essentially, r can be any full rank discrete subring. And then we define a module lattice as being um, uh, a module lattice of rank k over the ring r as the set of all r linear combinations of finitely many generating vectors y1 through yn in our number field k to the k. So notice that an ideal of a ring is just a rank 1 module lattice. And you can also observe that this definition is somewhat generalizing the definition I presented for Euclidean lattices. Um, to see this uh, essentially in the Euclidean lattice definition, we took the z-span of our basis vectors in uh, Euclidean space r to the d and here we're taking the r-span of our generating vectors in our number field k to the k. To make this association a little bit more concrete, um, essentially module lattices are just a subset of Euclidean lattices. And we can see this in two ways. So the first way is that if we equip our number field k to k with a norm, uh, then we can just embed our module lattice in k to k uh, into Euclidean space or into a Euclidean lattice in R to the kn. And by doing so, we now have um, well-defined geometric properties like the lengths of vectors are well-defined and the volume is well-defined. So determinant is well defined and so on. Um, the second way of seeing this association is to notice that module lattices are just Euclidean lattices with some symmetry. Uh, more formally, a uh, module lattice uh, is just a Euclidean lattice that's closed under uh, some set of linear transformations. And these linear transformations correspond to multiplication by ring elements. One of the most important problems in, uh, associated with lattices is the approximate shortest vector problem. Uh, and the problem statement is as follows. Uh, given a lattice basis B, the problem is to find a non-zero vector B in our lattice L, such that the length of this vector is at most gamma times the length of the shortest non-zero vector in L. Now you can see that we can uh, generalize this problem to the context of module lattices. And to do so, we call this problem now gamma k module SVP. And this is essentially solving gamma SVP on module lattices of rank k. Notice that uh, based on our previous discussion, gamma k module SVP can be no harder than gamma SVP over Euclidean lattices with rank Kn. And to see this um, 
essentially, like we said before, you can always embed a module lattice in the number field k to the k of rank k uh, to a Euclidean lattice in r to the kn and just solve gamma SVP there. So for crypto, uh, we care about approximation factor of gamma to be polynomial in the rank or the dimension of the lattice. And this will become relevant or this will come up again when we see the technical results. Since we're at crypto, um, I'd be remiss to not mention the relevance of module lattices to crypto. Uh, so essentially, most lattice-based crypto schemes use module lattices as a building block and more specifically the candidates uh, strong candidates for post-quantum crypto standardization by NIST that are being considered uh, they all use module lattices as building blocks and so um, faster algorithms for module SVP would essentially um, break the security of these schemes and this is a very high level motivational idea of why we should care from a crypto perspective. Uh, one thing I'll note here is that we use module lattices instead of Euclidean lattices because the added structure of module lattices uh, improves the efficiency of the crypto scheme. So I'll go into basis reduction algorithms for SVP in more detail in the second half of this talk but it's useful to describe the general idea at this point here. So essentially, um, basis reduction algorithms for SVP work as follows. Uh, we want to try and solve gamma SVP or approximate SVP on a lattice of high rank, say rank D. And to do this, we reduce the problem to solving approximate SVP on lattices of lower rank, say D prime. And this D prime is known as a block size. So a very famous and renowned application of this idea is the LLL algorithm. And so the LLL algorithm, the idea behind it is uh, in order to solve approximate SVP for lattices of large rank, uh, the algorithm reduces this to solving exact SVP for lattices of rank two. And as we've been uh, seeing in the previous slides, uh, since module SVP is just a special case of SVP, uh, basis reduction algorithms for SVP also solve module SVP. So this brings us to our broad motivational question. Um, so as we saw, we can always embed our module lattices into Euclidean space and perform the basis reduction algorithms for SVP. Um, in that manner. But the question that we ask is, can we do better? Can we find faster algorithms for module SVP if we actually take advantage of the added structure that module lattices have? And from a crypto perspective, this is uh, the motivational question translates into, um, does specializing to module lattices impact the security of our crypto schemes? So there's been a vast and rich line of work that's uh, looked at um, faster algorithms for solving module SVP on rank one module lattices. And there are indeed faster algorithms for the rank one module lattice, module SVP case. But fortunately, these uh, most crypto schemes are not broken by these algorithms. But if we have a similar improvement for higher rank lattices, uh, this would indeed um, result in jeopardizing the security of the crypto schemes that use module lattices. Um, and again, I am sweeping a lot of technical details under the rug, uh, but this is the general idea as to why we should care about this problem. So what happens for higher rank? What do we know for module SVP for higher rank module lattices. Um, spoiler alert, we actually don't answer the motivational question that I posed earlier. So till date, we still don't know if uh, there, there are faster algorithms for module SVP for higher rank, but our work actually uh, makes progress towards understanding this problem better. 
So last year, uh, Lee, Pellet, Mary, Stelle, and Wallet independently showed a reduction from a high rank module SVP to rank two module SVP. And this and their result can be thought of as a generalization of LLL to module lattices. What we show is uh, can be thought of as a generalization of block reduction or slide reduction to module lattices. Um, and so we show a reduction from rank K module SVP to rank beta module SVP uh, for any K and beta between two and K with an appropriate trade-off between the approximation factor and the rank. So the forefront of our knowledge regarding that question that I posed earlier about faster algorithms for module lattices for higher rank is the following. Uh, we know that solving module SVP for rank two module lattices is as hard as solving module SVP for higher rank module lattices. And so there could be two possible consequences of this uh, result. So the first consequence or scenario could be that maybe there is a large gap between the hardness of solving SVP for rank one versus rank two module lattices. Uh, the second scenario is a little bit more bleak. Um, since we already have faster algorithms for solving rank one module SVP, uh, we only need to make progress in solving module SVP or getting faster algorithms for uh, module SVP for rank two module lattices. And even this progress would result in jeopardizing uh, most crypto schemes that use module lattices as building blocks. So before we move on to the overview of our techniques, uh, here is the formal statement of our results. As I mentioned before, we, uh, we essentially generalized the slide reduction um, of gamma and nuen from 2008 uh, to module lattices. And so their result was, is the current state of the art for lattices. And their result is as follows. Uh, they showed that there is an efficient reduction from gamma KN SVP to gamma prime beta N SVP, where the approximation factor is given here. Uh, I'd like to note that the rank is parameterized as multiples of N, just so we can compare their result to our result more easily. So our main theorem is that there is an efficient reduction from gamma K module SVP to gamma prime beta module SVP, where the approximation factor is as follows. So I'd like to note three things on this slide. Um, the first is an interpretation of our result. So our result is essentially saying that using a module SVP oracle, up to certain approximation factors is as good as using a generic SVP oracle when it comes to basis reduction for module lattices. And this is somewhat surprising. Um, the second point I'd like to make here is that the approximation factor, as I mentioned earlier, for crypto, we care about gamma being polynomial in the rank or the dimension. And so you should think of K as being linear in beta. The third point is also regarding the approximation factor. Uh, if you notice, I haven't defined uh, the underlying ring or the number field uh, in this main theorem statement, but in reality, this approximation factor does depend on the underlying ring and the associated norm. Um, and so for this main theorem that we have here, it's stated for the cyclotomic, um, it's stated for the canonical embedding of the ring of integers uh, of cyclotomic fields. Okay, so now we move on to the second half of this talk. And before we dive into our techniques for reduction, basis reduction of module lattices, it helps to provide some intuition by going over the basis reduction techniques of Euclidean lattices.
So in for any you can including lattice L uh, with the basis B, uh, we can always do Gram Schmidt and QR decomposition to get um, B uh, as a product of two matrices, where Q is orthogonal matrix and R is the upper triangular matrix. And here the BI tildes are the Gram Schmidt vectors. So since Q is just a rotation matrix, uh, this doesn't change the lengths of the vectors. And so uh, we essentially can think of our lattice bases to be the upper triangular matrix up to a rotation. So we can just work with this um, upper triangular matrix as our lattice basis from now on and do block reduction on this. Now, as I described earlier in the first half of this talk, uh, the idea for block reduction is essentially if you're given a, if you want to solve approximate SVP on a lattice of high rank, say rank D, um, we reduce this problem to solving approximate SVP uh, on lattices of lower rank, say beta. Um, and to do so, we use our SVP oracle for rank beta, and we call that on each of these blocks of size beta by beta. And uh, the goal is to uh, essentially make the first vector in each of these blocks the shortest vector. And by doing so, we uh, end up with the resulting basis for this entire lattice um, the first vector in that resulting basis will be the solution to our approximate SVP problem for uh, rank D. So is there a way that we can generalize this idea that I just described for uh, block reduction with Euclidean lattices to module lattices? Um, the first natural attempt at trying to generalize this idea could be the following. Um, we could think of doing QR decomposition over our number field on the R generating set of a module lattice. Now, this idea doesn't work, and it's because not all module lattices of rank K have R generating sets uh, that have exactly K elements. Um, to illustrate this point, uh, take this example where we have the ideal generated by two and one plus square root negative five over the ring z square root negative five. Now this ideal is generated by two elements, but the rank of this ideal is one over the number field. So this particular approach to generalizing block reduction doesn't seem useful. Can we look at block reduction in a different way and perhaps generalize it from a different perspective. So the key observation here is that uh, in the block reduction or basis reduction that I showed you earlier, uh, if we if you want to do block reduction for lattices of rank D, we only needed to know about the nested sequence of sub lattices L1 through LD, where each of these LIs is just the integer linear combination of the first i basis vectors. And the, and the i, the block, is just given by the projection of the i plus beta sublattice orthogonal to the i minus 1 sublattice. Now, can we take this key observation and generalize this to module lattices? It turns out that we can. And to do this, to capture this idea, we introduce filtrations for module lattices. So a filtration of a module lattice is just a nested sequence uh, of module lattices. Uh, so for module lattice of rank K, we have a nested sequence M1 through MK. And uh, it has to satisfy the following three properties. The first one, uh, primitivity, is just a non-degeneracy property. The second one uh, is require we require that it has increasing ranks. And this follows the same intuition as I described earlier for our Euclidean lattice setting. So if we go back here, um, these sublattices indeed have increasing ranks, where each Li sublattice has rank I. 
And the third property uh, is that we require that it has rank one projections. And this is just an analog of gram schmidt orthogonalization in the context of module lattices. So these mi tildes are defined as the projection of mi orthogonal to mi minus one. For the experts in the audience, you might notice that uh, actually the first property implies the second and the second implies the third, uh, but we state all three for the sake of clarity. Um, and also uh, we do show that every uh, module lattice of rank K, there exists a filtration for every module lattice of rank K, and this can be computed efficiently. The last point I'll make on the side is that uh, we need to be careful about the projection map or the way we define the projection map. And in particular, we need to be careful about uh, regarding the space is defined over and the associated norm. If you're interested in these technical details, you should definitely go check out our full version. Okay, so just to draw out that third property a little bit more, um, as I mentioned, the third property is a rank one projections. And this is essentially the analog of Gram-Schmidt in the case of module lattices. So as you see here on the left-hand side, the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization uh, for Euclidean lattices is B1 tilde through BD tilde of over the Euclidean space R. And now, with, uh, now that we have our filtration definition, we can define an analog of that in the context of module lattices and as M1 tilde through MD tilde of a module lattice over the ring R. Okay, so you might be wondering, uh, we wanna do block reduction now on these filtrations, uh, on the filtration, but each of these blocks is now consisting of module lattices and they're not consisting of vectors anymore. So if you remember the idea for block reduction when we had uh, Euclidean lattices was just to take each block of these vectors and make the first vector the shortest in each block. Um, in order to generalize that idea, instead of making the short, the first vector the shortest in each block, what we do instead is we make the densest rank one module the first submodule in each block. And um, to capture this, we introduce a new problem called the dense ideal problem. Uh, I'll give a little bit more intuition on this slide. So we define density in terms of determinants. And essentially, the more dense uh, module lattice is, the smaller its determinant. And this implies that it contains a short vector. And if you're interested in more details, um, check out our full version. But this is all I have to say about our techniques. So to summarize our paper and this talk, these are the key takeaways that you should have. The first one is that module lattices are um, used in current lattice-based crypto schemes, especially the ones that are considered by NIST. Um, and we do know that there exist faster algorithms for module SCP for rank one module lattices, but we still don't know if this is true for higher rank uh, module lattices. And we, in our work, we make progress towards answering that question. Um, more specifically, we show that solving module SVP on a module lattice of rank K is no harder than solving it for a uh, module lattice of rank beta, where beta is between two and K. And we do this by generalizing basis reduction techniques on lattices. So here's all the references. Feel free to pause on this slide. Thank you for listening to this talk.